الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد Welcome to this new segment of our daily reminder Since this is today's day 29th of Sha'ban And uh, the moon is being sighted And so far we It seems uh, we haven't received so far confirmed uh, um, uh, sightings from uh, the Middle East or the Far East as far as I believe. Uh, Egypt has already announced that Ramadan for them, first day of Ramadan will be uh, Friday, inshallah. So we don't know how things are going to be exactly here in North America. Um, it's, it's just about the time that confirmations are being uh, coming at this specific moment in time. So what we decided to do is actually uh, we're going to leave uh, Kitab al-Adab for uh, a few days uh, just to give you a refresher inshallah on Ramadan. We're just going to go over some of the texts again from Riyadh al-Salihin, the same thing, same book uh, that talk about Ramadan, fasting, etc. Just to refresh your memory about uh, basic rulings of, of fasting. So we're going to just go with Imam al-Nawi rahimahullah ta'ala uh, under the heading Bab Wujub Sawmi Ramadan wa Bayanu Fadlu Siyami wa Mayata Alla Kubihi. This is a segment on uh, obliga the obligation of fasting Ramadan and uh, clarification or an explanation of the merits and the reward of fasting and matters that are related to that. Qala Allah Ta'ala Ya ayyuhaladina amanu kutiba alaykum wa siyamu kama kutiba ala ladina min kablikum la alakum tattaqun. Uh, then he he basically quotes the rest of the verses, which we are just going to comment on on briefly. So Allah says, "Ya ayuhal ladina amanu kutib alaykum usliyamu kama kutib ala ladina min qablikum la alakum tattaqun." O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed upon you, so that as it was prescribed upon nations before you, so that you may attain taqwa. And uh, again, taqwa is a very comprehensive term. It's a state in which the heart uh, resides. And it reflects in the state in, in the form of uh, a state that a person experiences and it translates into uh, desires, intentions, meaning a drive, intentions. And ultimately, this actually is being uh, translated as words and good words and good actions. So this is what the state of taqwa, and this shows that siyam, basically the point, the main point behind, behind siyam, obviously is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what does it help us achieve as human beings in this world? It helps us achieve taqwa. And that is that is the fuel for our journey uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah again, وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى And uh, take provision for, you know, when a traveler, a zad is basically, is, is the provisions that a traveler takes with them, the food, the drink, the necessary things that a traveler takes along the way so that they don't ha they don't starve on the way that's what a zad Allah says the best type of zad the best type of provision for the traveler is actually a taqwa so we need this is the basic fuel that keeps us going on the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it could be translated as many things as mindfulness of Allah awareness of Allah knowledge of Allah um, righteousness piety um, obedience to Allah, fear of Allah, all of those things are are contained in the word uh, in the word uh, at taqwa Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, فمن, فمن كان منكم أيام معدودات, just a few a few days. Meaning the whole fast is, does not extend months. It's basically days. It's a number of days, and these are maximum thirty days of Ramadan. Allah says, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَىٰ سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ So, and those who are sick during this time, during the month of Ramadan, or those who are traveling, then those people are excused to break the, their fast, not observe the fasting, the siyam of Ramadan, and then they make up what they missed later on, at a later, at a later time. فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٌ وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِدِيَةٌ طَعَامٌ مِسْكِينٌ فَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ وَأَنْ تَصُومُ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ And this basically this section means and those who can fast with extreme difficulty let's say those people with chronic illnesses, diseases uh, those people who um, uh, 
uh, whose jobs are, are quite uh, demanding when it comes to physical exertion and they cannot let's say for example take a break from from their work so they their daily lifestyle uh, sort of uh, uh, takes all of consumes all of their energy and observing the fast becomes extremely strenuous and difficult and overwhelming physically for them then those people have an option to um, to not fast but again there is a dispute among the scholars is this verse abrogated or not uh, many of them argue that it's not actually abrogated maybe part of its meaning is abrogated because at the beginning those uh, who, who, who could fast with difficulty they were allowed to break their fast and give a fidya uh, but again generally speaking there's a consensus now among the scholars in all later generations of Islam uh, from the time of a tabi'in or from the time of the companions onward afterwards uh, that basically that uh, a person has to fast un unless there is a valid excuse and valid excuses are the ones that are mentioned here is either a traveler or uh, someone who is experiencing illness uh, or some kind of sickness and if for a person has uh, unique circumstances where fasting is extremely as we said overwhelming and strenuous then uh, this uh, uh, th then basically this is uh, they, they, they might have an option you know to break to break their fast uh, so if it's if it's a, a consistent and continuous condition of difficulty uh, throughout the year and it's something they cannot t take a break from at all let's say it's it's a extreme weakness in their physical body etc or a medical condition then these people give a fidya but uh, uh, and uh, it's very unimaginable that someone has a, a, some kind of work that uh, that gets them to that state where they cannot fast and they have to ob they have to work every day in the year so this is very unlikely so so this is why some scholars say that it's actually it is this verse is actually or this specific part of the verse is actually abrogated and Allah says and that you fast is better for you if you actually if you actually know and it shows the merit of fasting that even if someone has an option to break to not observe the, the fast not to, to not observe the fast or to observe the fast but if they observe it it comes with extreme difficulty if they are exempt it's actually better for them if they can you know get by with 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 fasting it's a greater reward than the expiation or whatever they give in return for their um, for their their, their uh, breaking the fast uh, we're going to move on to the uh, or let's actually carry on with the verses when Allah says شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنْزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنُ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمْ وَشْتَهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْهُ This is the month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed so Allah chose the month of Ramadan to reveal the Quran in it why? because Ramadan is a very special time and Allah gives this special gift the gift of Ramadan, the gift of the Quran, his word, his spoken word, his revelation to humanity, Allah gave it to, to us, to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in the month of Ramadan. This is just shows uh, that you know special things are given in special times. Special times deserve special things, uh, and and this shows that we are about to enter into a month that is of special uh, station with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and this is something that we should not take light, uh, should not take lightly. This is something that we need to, I would say, uh, uh, benefit from and 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 uh, reap its fruits because it's because it's an opportunity. It's a very unique opportunity and it's something that 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 has a great of value in the sight of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and it's not something to be observed lightly. Uh, and Allah says that the Quran uh, is a source of guidance and and it, it is the criterion that helps people. That's it basically it draws the line between truth and falsehood and and thus this this actually there there is a hint there that Ramadan and observing the spirit of Ramadan and the practice of Ramadan could actually give us a lot of taqwa and a lot of um, I would say insight and a l it would align us with the truth and it would um, expose falsehood to us whether in ourselves in our lives 
in, in our approach to Islam, in our approach to anything. It just sets us, it aligns us with the truth in every aspect of our life. And this is actually a very, very beautiful meaning because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is connecting here the Quran, the Ram Ramadan to the Quran and Allah is saying the Quran serves this purpose. And all the Quran also has guidance and offers guidance and it shows that uh, Ramadan, that's what Ramadan has to offer. Ramadan is the medium for this. So if someone wants guidance, someone wants the truth, someone wants to, wants the questions to be answered and, and, and they want to know things at a deeper level, then Ramadan is the time for, for this. Uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sort of brings again the whole concept of those who are sick or those who are traveling. Uh, then they are excused to not to observe the fast and then make up the, the, day, uh, the missing days. Then Allah says uh, after that, um, that Allah wants ease for you. Allah doesn't want to put you under hardship and strain. And uh, this is something that we need to embrace in our hearts. That Allah wants ease for us. Uh, in Surah An-Nisa, Allah says, Allah wants to lessen your burden. Allah wants to make things easy for us. Allah wants to bring ease to, ease to us. But again, there are, there are things, the great things, the good things require hard work. So Allah says, Allah does not intend to put you on in, in hardship. On the contrary, Allah makes things easy for you. But again, there's a principle that Allah also wants to make clear who are the true ones, the sincere ones from the false ones. So the ones who are sincere are going to put up with whatever hardship pops up on the way. But the ones who are not sincere, they're just going, they, they, they're going to give up uh, on, on, on the path to Allah or the truth because they're not willing to invest that much. Their heart is not behind you know, their journey. Is, is, is their, 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 their love is not in the process. Uh, so this is why it comes with some difficulty, some hardship. But Allah does not want, first and foremost, to put us under hardship. That's not Allah's uh, intention. That's not Allah's point behind uh, uh, prescribing fasting upon us. But Allah wants, the reason behind fasting is actually Allah wants to help us grow. Allah wants to help us become better human beings. Allah wants us, wants us to know the truth more and come closer to Him more. And, 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 and uh, by definition, these things require some sacrifice and some work and, and some sincerity and, and devotion. Otherwise, people who don't have the sincerity and the intention uh, uh, are just going to be in the same crowd with people who are sincere and people who really want the truth. So in order to separate them, you need to put them to the test. And that's why fasting uh, and other obligations in Islam are there. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةِ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Allah says, so that you complete the numbers of days of Ramadan. So even if you miss, you make up those missed days in order for you to complete the days, the number of days prescribed upon you. وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا uh, اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ So that you glorify Allah. You say Allahu Akbar. You say it in your heart right now. And you say it verbally. وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا uh, اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ Due to the guidance that He provided you with. Uh, so that, that shows that here takbir is a form of appreciation and gratitude. And, 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 that, and that guidance helps us uh, appreciate Allah's worth more so we glorify Him more. Uh, eventually all of this will lead you to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the verses of fasting. There is more so um, inshallah maybe in, uh, in the future meetings we're going to deal with them. And this is enough for now. It's about uh, almost almost 15 minutes. Uh, so again, in Ramadan, inshallah, we are going to meet uh, half an hour before Maghrib. Uh, and we're going to have our daily halaqa or daily reminder. Uh, so that's going to be on the first day of Ramadan, inshallah. So if the first day of Ramadan turns out to be uh, tomorrow, Thursday, then we're going to start Thursday, tomorrow, um, half an hour before Maghrib uh, but let's say about 7.30 and uh, if um, if uh, uh, Ramadan uh, the first day of Ramadan uh, falls on Friday then inshallah we're going to start Friday uh, move our halqa or our reminder 
to the four Maghrib, uh, which which is na roughly now around 7:30 p.m. Uh, Toronto time. Jazakallah khairan for joining us, and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, bless uh, this month of Ramadan for us, and may Allah keep everyone safe and healthy. Jazakallah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.